Ford's Focus ST Hot Hatch is back with a mission, this fourth generation version being smarter, classier and more dynamically adept. In hatch or estate guys with petrol or diesel power, it's a car that's now easier to get the most from, and a machine you can enjoy to the full on your favourite road without afterwards having to pay for it with the kind of over firm ride you simply don't want in everyday traffic. Ultimately, so many quick cars can feel, well, rather irrelevant. Here's one that's anything but. ST is a badge that, when it comes to Ford, stands for quick but not concussive. A performance level that sits just above the company's fast but family friendly ST line models, but just below their track spec RS derivatives. A badge applied to the kind of car a red blooded racer could afford, enjoy, and use every day. A car like this, the fourth generation Focus ST. It's the kind of car that's always democratised performance, giving you the speed of a supercar within the body and the budget of something much more ordinary. Other brands promise this kind of thing, but in reality often do little more than bolt a set of spoilers and a turbo onto something more ordinary. Ford, though, has a different approach. The Blue Oval brand boasting a long history of developing proper performance versions of its mainstream models designed by enthusiasts to be driven by enthusiasts. The very first Focus ST was the Mark I ST170 model of 2002, but the first properly quick one was the Mark II model of 2005. That car was rapid, both in speed and in the way that its 225 PS, two and a half litre turbo engine drained its fuel tank in next to no time. Its replacement, a third generation model launched in 2012, then updated in 2015, was better. It primarily used a two litre EcoBoost petrol power plant and handled responsively, but arguably wasn't quite special enough. This, though, we're told, is a Focus ST that is. Take the all-new engine, the 2.3-litre unit we've previously seen, both in the Focus RS and the Mustang, here delivering 280 PS, 30 PS more than before, so as to meet the current class standard. And that power should now be more usable, thanks to a couple of Focus ST firsts. Selectable drive modes allow you to tailor the way the car will respond. And for the first time in a Ford front wheel drive model, there's an electronic limited slip differential to help get the power down through the bends. Some compensation for the continuing lack of a four wheel drive option. Those are the headlines. But of course, there's also plenty else to talk about, given that this Mark IV Focus ST is now based on the completely redesigned fourth generation Focus model launched in 2018, and therefore delivers a higher quality cabin than its predecessor, as well as much improved standards of safety and media connectivity. As before, Focus ST buyers not wanting a petrol hatch can also have a high performance diesel engine. And we've got that here. And with either engine, there's also the option of an estate body style if you want it. Stay with the petrol unit. And for the first time on a Focus ST, you'll be offered the chance to specify an extra cost auto gearbox. This one, a seven speed transmission with paddle shifters. It all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? Which is just as well, given that this car must take on an all new version of its Volkswagen Golf GTI arch rival, as well as tough class contenders. We really rate cars like Renault's Megane RS, Hyundai's i30N and the Honda Civic Type R. How does this Ford stack up against hot hatches of that caliber? Time to find out. Lots of questions here. There always are with any new Focus ST. Can this Ford get all its power to the tarmac with a little more decorum this time round? Will this fourth generation model's new 2.3 litre EcoBoost engine charm us a little more in this car than it managed to do in the Mustang? And could the lighter weight C2 platform make a significant difference? And what might this car feel like now 
that it's finally fitted out with modern engineering tech like adaptive damping, a drive mode system and, as an option, a paddle shift auto gearbox. There's certainly plenty of promise on paper with this Mark IV Focus ST. After all, the Ford Performance team did wonders with that 2.3-litre engine in the fire-breathing third-generation Focus RS model of 2015. And here, it's been paired with a clever anti-turbo lag system from the Ford GT supercar. This holds the throttle open for three seconds after you come off the throttle to prevent the reversal of airflow into the turbo, keeping it primed and spinning for swifter response. That's enough, the brand reckons, to make a petrol-powered EcoBoost version of this ST quicker in the mid-range than that old RS, which is somewhat incredible given that its 280 PS output is 70 PS less. In testing, this fourth generation Focus ST emphasised that point by proving slightly quicker than its illustrious RS predecessor around the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleife, in the dry at least. Unlike the RS, you don't get four-wheel drive here. The ST engine's lusty 420 Newton meter torque figure helps explain this strong showing. That output significantly greater than you'll find in any direct segment rival. The other bar stool nugget you can impress your friends with is that this car's steering rack has an 11-6-1 ratio that's quicker than that of a Ferrari 488 GTB, which is pretty much the first thing you notice when setting off. Turn the wheel and the response through the thick rim is so sudden and dramatic that if you're not particularly used to modern hot hatches, you might initially struggle to acclimatise. But once you do, you'll want to stay acclimatised because the immediacy you get back through the helm is an integral part of the vivacious handling that makes this car the accomplished shopping rocket it undoubtedly is. It's certainly effective in masking the one and a half tonne curb weight of this car, being basically the same rack you get in a Fiesta ST, 15% faster than a standard Focus at two turns, lock to lock, but with unique geometry and a few other tweaks for even sharper responses. The faster you go through the bends, the better it feels. It's at this point where several of this fourth generation model's party pieces come into play. The first of these being the option to select a driving mode via this steering wheel button. One of the reasons why this feature is now particularly needed on this car is that this time round Ford's developed its CCD adaptive damping system for this model, a setup which monitors suspension movement every two milliseconds, reacting to changes in the road surface, braking and yaw angle. It's included with the EcoBoost version and on a standard ST variant works primarily through three settings. Scroll through the normal or slippery options and find the sport mode you'll need for spirited driving and the car instantly feels more alert. Throttle response sharpens, the steering gains more heft and the dampers tense more firmly. Unfortunately though, the mode system doesn't include the kind of individual option that some rival models offer, enabling you to tailor specific ride and handling preferences to a one-touch setting. So it's just as well that the Ford performance engineers have judged the various parameters of that sport mode to so effectively maximise performance from either of the engines on offer. Yes, we said either. As before, petrol power isn't your only option here, since as with the previous generation model, Ford's also offering Focus ST buyers a diesel variant. The Red Mist Brigade will sniff at that, of course, but the facts are that the all-new 2.0-litre EcoBlue 190 PS unit we're trying today is unique to this model. It's the fastest diesel ever offered for the Focus and, with 400 newton meters of torque, develops almost as much mid-range grunt as the far more powerful petrol version. The diesel's rest at 62 mile an hour figure, 7.7 seconds en route to 138 miles an hour, is quite a bit different from that of the EcoBoost variant, of course, and is only a second quicker then you go in the kind of Focus ST line EcoBlue 150 PS diesel model that would look much the same and cost vastly less. Hmm. In a petrol ST, the stats read rather better. Rest to 62 miles an hour, dispatched in 5.8 seconds on the way to a top speed that's limited to 155, but which, if unrestricted, 
probably top 170 miles an hour and apparently did during autobahn tests around Ford's German headquarters. For reference, those are virtually the same figures as you'd get from close rivals in this class, like the Renault Megane RS and the Honda Civic Type R. As referenced earlier, the EcoBoost unit does its best work in the mid-range, punching you in the back from 2,500 RPM with an unbroken wave of thrust that only begins to tail off at around 4,500 RPM when the red line begins to loom into view. You have to have the petrol engine if you want the option of that paddle shift 7-speed auto gearbox we mentioned earlier, which features an adaptive shift scheduling system able to assess individual driving styles to optimise gear shift timings. But you're almost certain to want to stick with a standard 6-speed manual stick shift, here revised with a shift throw reduction of 7% for a sportier feel, especially if you've opted for a petrol EcoBoost ST, because with that package you can also have the manual box matched up with another feature borrowed from the brand's GT supercar. Ford's rev matching system allows what's called flat shifting, which relieves you of the need to lift off the throttle between upward gear changes and briefly blips the throttle in an F1 style touch during down changes. Experts well versed in the kind of heel and toe technique used in race driving will find this unnecessary, but if you're a more typical buyer of this car, you're going to want to play with that at the first opportunity. We ought to point out that rev matching isn't standard, but it might as well be because it comes as part of the extra cost performance pack that 99% of Focus ST buyers will pay only a little more to get, if only to preserve residuals. A future used buyer is likely to take a dim view of a version of this car not fitted with this option since it includes several features crucial to completion of its potential driving experience. As well as rev matching, a multicolour ambient lighting system and a shift indicator, the performance pack gives you an extra, even more focused driving mode racetrack, which, as the name suggests, is primarily tuned for the circuit. And you also get launch control for Grand Prix starts, achieved with best results by revving from rest to about 2,300 RPM, then thrusting in the clutch as fast as you dare. With the diesel model, the performance pack does without rev matching and launch control, but it's just as important to have because it adds back in the CCD adaptive damping system that you otherwise wouldn't get on an EcoBlue variant. Another thing the diesel version of this car lacks is the ELSD, or Electronic Limited Slip Differential, that Ford's developed only for the EcoBoost version of this ST, which is standard fit as part of the continuing and not always successful efforts the brand has made throughout the history of this model to help try and get torque to the tarmac. Thanks partly to ELSD, this fourth generation design does that more effectively than any of its predecessors during fast cornering using hydraulically activated clutches to redistribute up to 100% of available engine torque to the tyre with most traction so as to counteract wheel spin. The result is increased agility and a significant reduction in the understeer during acceleration that you'd otherwise feel through each turn and pouring out of it. The ELSD setup is certainly pretty clever able to preemptively adjust torque distribution using inputs from powertrain and vehicle dynamics and sensors rather than simply responding to wheel spin as a conventional torque vectoring system would, which is what you're stuck with on the diesel variant. You might have read about the previous generation Focus ST model's occasional tendency towards torque steer, that feeling of the wheel writhing in your hands under harsh acceleration. Well, that's been pretty much eradicated here, something Ford's made sure of by fitting what's called a torque disturbance reduction system to the electric power steering, which dials out torque steer by counter-torquing the steering column on those occasions when the activation of the ELSD diff might get quite aggressive. So yes, we're talking of a significant dynamic improvement here, and importantly, one that Ford's managed to deliver without affecting what for us was the most impressive thing about the previous version of this car, its ride and handling balance. This is where so many hot hatches come unstuck. The firm suspension needed for terrific tarmac handling, inflicting upon you the need for an uncomfortable jiggly ride. Is this fourth generation Focus ST better? Well, 
put it this way, if we were heading up one of Ford's rival brands, we'd be buying our engineers this car and suggesting that they use it as a dynamic benchmark. Whether the lap you're completing is of Silverstone or the Surbiton one-way system, this Ford will be fine with it. The suspension has an incorporated pothole detection system, cruising over these and associated tarmac tears far more easily than would most rivals in this segment. Open road refinements are reasonable too, aided by a standard adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but also includes lane centering assist that will subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the centre of your lane. You won't, after all, always be wanting to throw this car through the back doubles. But when you do, this Focus ST's character can change with a stab of your right foot and the press of a button, accompanied by an appropriately serious sounding engine note enhanced via the cabin speakers. Earlier versions of the previous generation car used a rather synthesized version of this sort of fake sound setup. One writer described the result as sounding like a Flemmy Rottweiler hiding inside the dashboard. But this time round, it's been done rather more realistically, even in this diesel version, which will get you more in the mood for the kind of uber quick secondary road point to point driving. This Ford is so very good. In fourth generation form, its added bite is aided by grippier Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres and a clever SLA suspension setup that even without the CCD damping is pretty darn focused. The car has been lowered by 10mm, incorporates thicker anti-roll bars and features spring and damper units that are 20% stiffer at the front and 13% firmer at the rear. All of which complements this Mark IV model's stiffer C2 platform with its 20% increase in torsional rigidity which makes a big difference. So does the almost perfect weighting you get from all the main controls, especially the brakes, which have been appropriately uprated too. They're now fitted out with an electronic booster that continually adjusts the biting point to keep pedal feel consistent. Plus, Ford has installed larger discs all round that are more suited to circuit work, being able to resist fade four times better than those of the old model. Not that this is really intended as a regular track day tear away. If that's what you want, then a harder edged hot hatch like a Honda Civic Type R will suit you better. This Focus ST isn't really that sort of car. Think of it as more like a Golf GTI with a bit of added extra bite and you'll be closer to the mark. Opinions differ wildly on what a hot hatch of this kind should look like. The sector offers everything from the button-down subtlety of the German premium models to the wild extremes of the Renault Sport Megane Trophy and the Honda Civic Type R. It fits with every other aspect of this Ford's character that it offers something in between. A kind of compromise, but a decently dynamic looking one, at least with this optional orange fury paintwork anyway. Overtaking presence is key with a car like this, of course, and this revitalised Focus ST gets plenty of it. With this bolder, more confident front grille shaped to optimise cooling, its lower section, as before, partly obscured by the number plate, which sits just above this stylized lower intake. Overtly angled lower wing elements channel air into the air curtain inlets for improved aerodynamic performance and just above sit headlamps that feature full LED technology and can adapt themselves to the road ahead and other motorists. They're placed as far into the corners of the car as possible to maximise the vehicle's width and stance flowing up into a longer bonnet featuring twin creases on either side. When it comes to the really significant styling changes made to this fourth generation Focus ST model though, you'll learn more from a profile perspective, especially if you choose this five door hatch body shape over the alternative estate variant. A full body styling kit is of course a continuing part of the ST package and includes these 
bulging side skirts that emphasize the 10 millimeter lowered chassis height. The wheels are now a size larger than before. These large 19 inch magnetite finished rims and they'll be embellished with evocative red brake calipers if you've paid extra for the optional performance pack. Gone is the previous car's overtly wedge shaped silhouette, replaced instead by one in which these A pillars have been placed further back with longer front wings and more athletic sculpture that sees one flowing crease drop down over the front door handle and another ease out of the panel work of the rear door to give the haunches some extra shape and purpose. At the rear, the first thing you'll notice is this large roof spoiler. Otherwise, the main change made to this further generation design lies with the adoption of these much larger two-piece tail lamps, which feature full LED technology. Plus, the bumper's now been styled with a bit more flair, incorporating these corner reflectors, flanking a lower diffuser-style section that's the key visual engine identifier for Focus ST models. In 2.3-litre EcoBoost petrol variants, this panel's embellished by a large single tailpipe on either side. And with a 2-litre EcoBlue diesel model like this one, you get these smaller twin tail pipes offset to the right. As usual though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. Namely, the completely new, lighter, stiffer and stronger C2 structure that lies beneath the curvier panelwork. Right, time to take a look inside. But before we do, let's touch upon something we don't normally talk about, the ignition key. As usual on a modern Ford, this one's programmable, which means that it can be set to automatically restrict elements of the car's functionality, things like maximum speed and stereo volume. It can even deal with seatbelt reminders and prevent vital safety systems from being switched off. It's a useful touch that'll provide vital extra peace of mind if you occasionally need to lend your car car out to someone but want to oversee how they use it. You'll get two of these so-called my key fobs when you take delivery. Just keep an unrestricted admin key for yourself and use the other to keep borrower driving in check. Right, what's it like at the wheel? Well, if your perspective is that Ford has been a touch conservative with the exterior styling, then you won't change that opinion once inside because at first glance, it doesn't feel all that much different from an ordinary ST line variant in the standard range. The main change lies with the addition of these grippy Recaro seats, trimmed with contrast itching in a combination of leather and an Alcantara-like material called Miko Dynamica. Those buyers rather over-familiar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders will be pleased to find that these chairs are rather broader than those used in the previous model, but they still have substantial bolsters that will hold you securely in place through spirited cornering. Alloy pedal covers, faux carbon trim inlays, an ST embossed aluminium gear knob, grey stitched floor mats and branded scuff plates on the sills complete the ST embellishments. These chairs position you a touch lower this time round, though you're still perfectly placed behind the thick-rimmed, leather-stitched sports steering wheel, which is where you'll find the button for this car's all-important driving mode system. The ST engineers wanted it positioned there so that it would be easier to access at speed. Your chosen drive setting will be displayed on the instrument binnacle's 4.2-inch centre colour screen, a monitor flanked by conventional speedo and rev counter readouts, which unfortunately aren't of the italicised Ford Performance variety. The Blue Oval brand's Go Faster division is, though, referenced in this display's selectable My View screen, which is where you'll find a digital speedometer, and virtual gauges for turbo pressure, oil temperature and oil pressure. Rather disappointingly, these are no longer separated out as analog dials at the top of the dash as they were previously in the style of fast forwards going all the way back to the 70s Escort Mexico. 
That's because the designers have had to use that fascia top position for this prominent 8-inch SYNC 3 infotainment screen. As we've remarked when testing other Ford models, there's not too much wrong with the functionality of this setup, but its graphics lack the crisp clarity of those you'd find in a Volkswagen Group product, and its refresh times are slower too. The Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems are built in, but when you use them, you lose these helpful shortcut buttons at the base of the screen, which is a touch annoying. There's voice control too, but it's nothing like as intuitive as the system you'll find in a rival Golf GTI. On the plus side, Ford includes as standard here a couple of things that rivals will charge a lot more for. A premium DAB audio system, a 10 speaker 675 watt B and O 360 degree sound setup. And Wi-Fi connectivity that comes courtesy of the built-in modem included in this car's Ford Pass Connect package. Ford hopes you'll find the ambience of this fourth generation Focus ST more inviting. To that end, the dashboard has been pulled forward and there's a slim, quite low set centre console. Plus, the redesigned body shell has freed up more room for shoulders and knees. As a result, the cabin has a surprisingly spacious feel, something probably helped by this Mark IV design's massive 50% reduction in button clutter. Quality's taken a decent step forward too, with smart metallic highlights and soft touch materials covering most of the higher surface areas, while hard scratchier panels are generally banished to lower areas you'll rarely touch. Flock lined storage areas, this smart concertinering storage tray lid between the seats and an electronic handbrake also aim to push this cabin up market a bit. Despite all of Ford's efforts though, you still wouldn't quite think you were in a Volkswagen Group product. It's just a few little touches that make the difference. Would you get fake door stitching or a center console box fashioned from a cheap plastic molding in a Golf GTI? We think not. What else? Well, the ergonomics are difficult to fault, the pedals in particular being very well spaced if you've perfected a race style heel and toe gear shift technique and don't fancy using the clever rev matching function that comes with the performance pack. Frontward visibilities aided by thin A pillars and rearward visions pretty uncluttered too, though just to make sure parking sensors and a rear wide view camera are standard fit. There's even a park assist system that will help you identify parking bays and automatically steer you into them. On to cabin practicalities. Stowage areas include a coin tray behind the handbrake switch and to the left of it that sliding cover we referred to earlier which conceals a couple of cup holders. While we're talking cabin storage we'll tell you that the door pockets are a touch on the small side but you do get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, a further cubby by the driver's right knee and a storage area at the base of the centre stack that includes USB and 12 volt ports plus an optional wireless phone charging mat. The lidded storage bin between the seats we referred to earlier includes a lift out top tray, a pen clip and a USB port. Illuminated vanity mirrors are built into both sun visors as are ticket clips and you get a reasonably sized glove box too though unfortunately this area can't be cooled. Time to move rearwards. Now the previous generation Focus ST was somewhat cramped in the back by class standards. Will 18 millimeters of additional exterior length and a 53 millimeter wheelbase increase this time round be enough to change that? Yes is the answer. The space on offer here certainly doesn't redefine the current segment standard but it does at least now typify it. In this Focus, back seat folk are at last now treated much as they would be in a rival Golf GTI, thanks to the way that this Mark IV model's new C2 platform has freed up 56 millimeters more knee clearance, 78 millimeters more leg room, and 60 millimeters more shoulder room. Plus, there's decent foot space beneath the front seats. We've appreciated the improvement in rear sideward visibility too. When seated back here in the old Mark III Focus ST, your view to the side was blocked by the C pillar in a way it no longer is. We also approve of this low center transmission tunnel, though a center seated adult will still be as relatively uncomfortable on longer trips 
as they would normally be in such a position in a car of this class. What else? Well, there's a centre armrest with the usual dual cup holder mouldings, plus decently sized rear door pockets, outer ISOFIX child seat attachments, netted seat back storage areas and a centre 12 volt port, though a USB point would arguably be more useful. The slightly larger expanse of side window glass included this time round makes this part of the cabin feel a touch airier too, something you can further emphasise by specifying this optional panoramic glass roof, though that will reduce the otherwise very acceptable headroom levels by a few inches, plus it adds an extra 20 kilograms of weight just where you don't need it in a car like this. Let's finish by taking a look at the cargo area. Pausing on the way in pulling out these wide opening doors to notice these neat but rather flimsy looking door edge protectors that pop out to prevent car park dings. And the easy fuel filler neck designed as usual on Ford cars to make it impossible for you to inadvertently put diesel into a petrol model or vice versa. Ah yes, the boot. At Car and Driving, we seem to be just about the only reviewers who properly highlighted the fact that with previous Focus ST models, the space you got back here was bordering on the unacceptable for a car of this size. With the hatch version of that old car, if you had a spare wheel fitted, you got just 277 litres of capacity. Things are no better this time round. Just 273 litres of capacity being available to you in this hatch variant if a mini spare has been fitted. Partly because some of the space below the floor has been taken up by the subwoofer for the B&O audio system. To give you some class perspective on that, the boot of a rival Honda Civic Type R is 420 litres, around 70% bigger. That's partly why Ford is also offering the estate body shape we mentioned earlier, which can take 541 litres with all the seats in place. If you stick with this hatch variant, you will at least find that this area is practically shaped and accessed via a low-ish loading lip. A bulky pram and up to five carry-on suitcases will just about fit. There are the usual couple of bag hooks and, as expected, four tie-down points. Unfortunately, the adjustable height boot floor that's fitted to more ordinary Focus hatches can't be included here because of the continuously controlled damping suspension setup, which seems like a bit of a design oversight. It would have been nice if, to compensate, Ford had thrown in the ski hatch for longer items that is fitted to a comparably priced Focus Vignale. Unfortunately, though, that feature's absent too. So, if you need more room, you'll have to push forward the 60-40 split rear bench, at which point between 1,250 litres of space can be freed up in this hatch model. An estate fitted with a mini spare will give you up to 1,576 litres thanks to 175 millimetres of extra loading length this time round and an extra 43 millimetres of roof height for this generation model, an increase apparently calculated so as to enable owners to comfortably accommodate a dog crate. Go for that station wagon variant and auto folding, easy fold rear seat backs come as standard. Plus, you can have a gesture controlled powered tailgate if you're prepared to pay extra for it. The pricing proposition for this Ford is quite a bit different this time round. The last time we tested a Focus ST, the facelifted third generation model in 2015, prices started at well under £23,000. At the time of the launch of this fourth generation design, those figures had risen to a starting point of around 32,500 for the 280 PS petrol hatch version that most customers will want, with an extra £1,200 to find if you want the estate body style. You can save a little by opting for the 190 PS 2 litre EcoBlue diesel variant. That starts from around £30,000, with again the same £1,200 premium necessary for an estate. All Focus ST variants are front driven and with the petrol model there's a 7 speed auto gearbox paddle shift option if you want it. That's quite a lot of cash and around £9,000 more than a top spec Fiesta ST. Though to be fair, as we'll see in a moment, it's also the going rate for a serious hot hatch in the family hatchback class these days. 
Part of the reason for that price rise is that Ford isn't offering different ST trim levels this time round. The previous car was available in ST1, ST2 and ST3 forms, the base version formula, allowing the brand to strip some equipment out and get list pricing down to levels that appeared to significantly undercut direct competitors. But customers who invariably in this segment want a higher spec weren't fooled and Ford found that nearly everyone opted for the ST3 anyway. So the brand has now abandoned that approach, these days offering this car only in a single, very well kitted out level of trim. Time for a bit more detail on that value proposition and we'll start by evaluating it from the perspective of the petrol hatch version of this Ford that most who want this fast focus will be looking at. As usual, this ST significantly undercuts a comparable Volkswagen Golf GTI but look elsewhere and at first glance you might think as we do that the blue oval brand has certainly been bullish in the way it's chosen to price this car. The asking figure for the petrol hatch ST model is, for instance, £1,000 above what you'd pay for a Honda Civic Type R with 30 PS more. Look a little closer though and you might note that most Type R customers choose the plusher GT version of that Civic and that's actually £1,000 more than this Ford. The price gap to this model's two other closest competitors is more difficult to explain away. This Ford costs £3,000 more than the excellent Hyundai i30N performance model and £4,500 more than the Renault Megane RS. Both offer the same kind of performance as a Focus ST EcoBoost, though arguably provide it with a touch less finesse. To be frank, we'd struggle to look beyond the four hot hatch options we've just mentioned if we were looking for an alternative to this Focus ST in this segment. At the time of this test in autumn 2019, Seat was still selling its Leon Cupra and Peugeot was still selling its 308 GTI, but both cars weren't far off replacement. And Skoda was just about to launch the fourth generation version of its Octavia VRS. All three would save you two or 3,000 over a Focus ST, but neither car is as serious a driving machine as this Ford. You wouldn't really even think of taking a 308 GTI, a Leon Cupra or an Octavia VRS on a track day, but you couldn't really enjoyably own a Focus ST without doing that at least once, which says it all really. If you have fewer budget restrictions, then you might want to consider a hot hatch of this sort with a premium badge, in which case you'll need to find quite a bit more, a starting point of around £37,000 for a BMW M135i xDrive, a Mercedes AMG A35 4Matic, or an Audi S3 Sportback, or more likely around £40,000 if you want either of those cars with a specification closer to that of this Ford. That's quite a price jump though it might soften that blow to realise that in all three cases, the four-wheel drive system you can't have on a Focus ST is included as part of the deal. Earlier, we mentioned we were looking at comparative models from the perspective of a Focus ST petrol hatch. If you want to consider diesel or estate versions of this car, you'll have far fewer alternative options. Only Volkswagen, Seat, Skoda and Peugeot offer quick estates in this category. All can be handled with diesel engines and all are priced reasonably comparably with this Ford. As for premium models, well, there's only faster versions of the Mercedes CLA shooting brake, and for one of those, you'd probably be looking at around five to eight thousand pounds more. We can see an interesting case for buying this Focus ST in petrol estate form, a practical package that would provide a really subtle way of going very quickly indeed. To be honest, though, we think there are far fewer reasons to buy the diesel versions of this fast forward, particularly as the brand can also sell you a Focus ST line, 2 litre EcoBlue 150 PS model that looks much the same in hatch or estate guise, is hardly any slower and would save you almost £5,000 to buy. Anyway, enough with comparisons, let's say that you've considered all of this and concluded that it is a Focus ST of some sort that you really want. 
then you're going to need to know just how generous Ford has been when it comes to standard equipment. Well, we mentioned earlier that there was just a single well-specified equipment level. That includes a full ST body styling kit incorporating a large rear spoiler. Plus, you get adaptive LED headlights and unique ST Sport suspension. In addition, there are ST engineered features like the brand's ELSD or Electronic Limited Slip Differential and a driving modes package with normal, slippery and sport settings. On EcoBoost petrol models, you also get the standard inclusion of CCD or continuously controlled damping that works through the drive mode setting you've selected to alter ride quality to suit the way you want to drive. Other equipment elements a Focus ST buyer can expect run to adaptive cruise control, LED tail lights, rear privacy glass, all-round parking sensors, a reversing camera, a park assist auto parking package and the Ford key-free keyless entry system. Plus, there's the useful Ford MyKey setup that recognises your favourite driving settings from an individually programmed ignition key. All of this is in addition to the usual features you'd expect to find on a Focus variant of this price. Things like auto headlamps, a useful quick clear heated windscreen, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm and a mini spare wheel rather than one of those irritating tyre repair kits. Inside the key inclusion lies with a pair of Recaro sports seats trimmed with contrast stitching in a combination of leather and an Alcantara-like material called Miko Dynamica, a heated sports steering wheel, alloy pedal covers, faux carbon trim inlays, an ST embossed aluminium gear knob, grey stitch floor mats and branded scuff plates on the sills complete the ST embellishments. Otherwise, it's exactly as it would be in a well-specified model in the mainstream part of the Focus range, which means you get a dual-zone electronic air temperature control, a six-way power-adjustable driver's seat and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. Infotainment's taken care of by the brand's usual SYNC 3 8-inch centre dash screen, which here includes everything the brand's technology is capable of. That means you get navigation and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, plus a 10-speaker, 675-watt B&O, 360 degree premium sound system, and Wi-Fi connectivity that comes courtesy of the built-in modem included in this car's Ford Pass Connect package. Enough on standard spec, what about options? Well, there's no doubt about the most important one here, the performance pack. As a Focus ST buyer, you're going to want this, so see if you can negotiate it into the asking price, which should be easily possible because on an EcoBoost petrol variant, the performance pack is only 250 quid more, which rather begs the question why Ford didn't just include it in the first place. That nominal extra payment gets you an additional, more focused drive mode, race track, which you'll want if you ever take this car on a circuit day. And a multicoloured ambient lighting so that red mist can fall across the cabin as well as across your mood as you attack your favourite challenging back road at night. If your ST EcoBoost has manual transmission, the performance pack will also include launch control for Grand Prix style starts, a shift indicator and Ford's clever rev matching system so you can sound like Fernando Alonso as you're down changing through the short shifting six speed box. If you've chosen a diesel powered Focus ST, the performance pack is a little different, including the CCD or continuously controlled damping system that normal ST diesel models don't get, along with the racetrack mode, the shift indicator and the multicolour ambient lighting package, all for £800 more. And beyond the performance pack, well, you might want to look at three of the options we've had fitted here. The openable panoramic glass roof, a head-up display and a wireless charging pad. You can also add in a CD player and Ford Performance branded floor mats, license plate holders and a Ford Performance carbon gear knob. Paintwork is going to be important to you as well. 
if you're a typical ST buyer. Unless you specify this car in solid race red, you're going to need to be paying your Ford dealer extra for your choice of colour. Appallingly, even solid frozen white costs 250 quid extra. Beyond that, there's a single premium body colour, Agate Black and four exclusive body shades, Magnatech Ruby Red, Classic Ford Performance Blue, and as in this case, the emotive Orange Fury. Orange is a long established Focus ST signature shade, starting with the electric orange of the Mark II model, then the tangerine scream shade of the Mark III. Orange Fury, though, is brighter than any of them for extroverts only. And practical options? Well, one further change with this fourth generation design is that you can specify a tow bar on the petrol variant. The centrally mounted exhaust of the previous model made that impossible last time round. There are various practical options for the cargo area, including a boot liner, a reversible load compartment mat and a load retention net. You can also specify a rear bumper protector to guard against scratches when you're sliding heavy stuff in and out. And if you're activity orientated, you might want to look at a bike pack carrier that goes with the crossbars you can specify for the roof. Plus, there are the usual tow bars, roof boxes, wind deflectors, mud flaps and carpet mats. OK, enough with general spec and options. Perhaps the highlight here is that all Focus ST models now come with autonomous emergency braking. Ford calls its system pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection. As usual with these kinds of setups, this one works as you drive to scan the road ahead for potential collision hazards with a particular focus on pedestrians. It even works at night. If something you might be about to hit is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. And should you still manage to have a collision, a post-collision braking system automatically applies the brakes to try and help avoid the car spinning off to hit something else. There's also a lane keeping alert system that warns you if you veer out of lane and a lane keeping aid that will automatically steer you gently back to where you should be. And Ford provides an intelligent speed assist speed limiter to help you keep safe and legal through urban areas. In addition, the sync infotainment package as usual includes an emergency assist feature that will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. All Focus ST variants also get Ford's driver assistance pack, which is optional across the rest of the Focus range. Here, the key feature is an adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but also includes lane centering assist that will subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the center of your lane. This is about the closest this Focus can get to autonomous driving tech. That driver assistance pack also includes various other camera-driven features. Driver alert, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. Evasive steering assist, which helps drivers steer around stopped or slower vehicles to help avoid collisions. Also, high beam which automatically dips your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic, and traffic sign recognition, which reads speed signs, displaying them on the dash as you pass. That speed sign information can then combine with navigation data so that the intelligent speed assist speed limiter we mentioned earlier can be programmed to automatically set itself whenever you enter a speed limited zone, not allowing you to exceed the legal figure. That way, you should never get a speeding ticket ever again. In theory, anyway. Don't you just love technology? If you still want to go further as an option, it's also possible to order a blind spot information system with cross-traffic alert setup. This works on the move to warn you if you're about to pull out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And it also warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. 
Of course, this Ford also includes a standard, all the more conventional safety features you'd expect in this day and age. So you can tick off ESP, stability control, traction control, and an ABS braking system with EBA, emergency brake assist for panic stops. There are also the usual twin, front, side, and curtain airbags. Take all of these many and varied safety features into account, and you'll not be surprised to hear that this car achieved a full house, five-star overall safety rating from Euro NCAP, who specifically gave it a very creditable 85% rating for adult occupant protection and an 87% rating for child occupant protection. The last time the Focus ST moved up from a two-litre engine to something a bit larger, which is what happened in the switch from the Mark 1 ST 170 of 2002 to the two and a half litre Mark 2 version of this car launched in 2005, the result was a huge increase in real-world fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. So, an enthusiast for this model line might be forgiven for having a few concerns about this fourth generation design's move up to a 2.3 litre power plant particularly given that when fitted to a Ford Mustang, this same engine struggles to crack 30 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. Well, it does slightly better here, recording a WLTP rated combined cycle figure of 34.4 mpg in an EcoBoost ST hatch and 179 grams per kilometer of NEDC rated CO2. To give you some class perspective, we'll tell you that this is pretty much identical to what you'd get in either a rival Honda Civic Type R, a Hyundai 130N Performance, or a Renault Megane RS, but not quite as good as you'd manage in a rival Volkswagen Golf GTI. Overall, we think that all of that will probably be irrelevant for most likely owners. Quite frankly, if you average more than 25 miles per gallon in this car, then you're not using it properly and it deserves a better home. You know where we are. If fuel consumption really is an issue for you, then this diesel version will obviously appeal because it delivers up to 58.8 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 125 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2 emissions. That's helped by gearing stretched out quite substantially compared to the petrol variant, so as to improve potential efficiency figures. If you care about getting close to the kinds of readings we've been quoting, you'll be interested in the eco-meter provided in the My View section of the instrument binnacle screen. The same display offers an eco-coach section which helps you to see if you're driving in an efficient manner. To match the improved class efficiency standard, Ford's worked hard with this fourth generation Focus ST model range. Design improvements include sleeker bodywork, a best-in-class 0.25 CD drag factor, air curtain technology to reduce turbulence around the wheels, a new C2 platform that on its own saves 88 kilos of weight, and an engine stop-start system. But a lot of that has merely offset the additional weight of this Mark IV's designs, extra equipment and stronger, stiffer body. What else? Well, we'll tell you about servicing, which on both engines is required every two years or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. The instrument binnacle display screen can brief you on oil life and in a diesel variant on the fuel tank's level of AdBlue additive, something you'll need to get topped up as part of regular servicing. Maintenance bookings can be done online through the My Ford portal. This is part of the Ford Blue Service scheme that wraps up all of the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle that includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts and highlights any work required with a red, amber or green traffic light warning to rank items that need attention in order of importance. There's also the Ford Service app that you can download to your phone for free. It lets you locate your nearest dealer and make a booking, plus has a couple of extra elements allowing you to find petrol stations and including a Park Me feature that remembers where you left your focus so you won't have to hunt for it, say, in multi-storey car parks. On to insurance, which is rated at 23E for the diesel version and a rather less reasonable 34E for the petrol model. 
Finally, let's consider the question of residual values. This area has never been a focus ST strength, but experts predict that this Mark IV model will perform much better than its predecessor. In other words, it'll be closer to cars like the Renault Megane RS and the Hyundai i30N, but still some way off the residuals of a Honda Civic Type R or a Volkswagen Golf GTI. To maximise your potential residuals, make sure that you tick the box for the performance pack in specifying this car. Knowledgeable used market buyers aren't going to be keen on versions of this fast Ford that lack that crucial inclusion. Talking of performance, those bespoke Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres aren't going to be cheap to replace, so bear that in mind before you go track day showboating. As for the warranty, well, like all Fords, this one comes with a 36-month, 60,000-mile package that also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. On top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee for 12 years. Ford also offers the chance to extend this cover to either four years and 80,000 miles or five years and 100,000 miles. Ford hasn't set out to make the fastest hot hatch in the Golf GTI segment here, or the most wild looking, or the most track ready. If in buying a car of this kind, your overriding priorities lie in any of these three areas, there are other rivals we'd point you towards. But if what you'd really like is a car that can combine all those virtues in one very complete package, we'd absolutely direct you to include a Focus ST high up on your wish list. There's a difference between a mere hot hatch and a properly developed performance car. And if you want to know exactly what that is, we'd recommend that you try this Focus, then go and drive one of its rivals. Some may be faster, others may feel more upmarket, but few, if any, are so enjoyable to drive quickly. This model line has a rich seam of form in delivering that attribute, which explains why we rated the previous version of this car so highly, but it wasn't quite as involving and rewarding as its little Fiesta ST stablemate. It wasn't quite the car it could have been. This replacement Focus ST gets closer to that mark with its limited slip diff, adaptive damping, rev matching software and driving modes. It's these days a far more sophisticated thing to the point where some buyers like us might occasionally miss the effervescent simplicity of its smaller stablemate. But tech like this is now expected from a larger hot hatch and in delivering it, this Focus now feels far more comfortable transmitting its torque to the tarmac. Plus, almost as importantly, Ford has made the whole process sound a little more exciting too. Well, the petrol version does anyway. We're not really quite sure why you'd buy this diesel derivative. Assuming though that the EcoBoost Focus ST variant is the one you have in mind, there's lots to like here. Put everything together and the result for us is the only everyday usable contender in this class we'd also want to take on track. Are there issues? Well, some might feel the looks are a little on the subtle side and the cabin, though much improved, still delivers less of a premium feel than you'll find elsewhere in this segment. Plus, it would have been nice if Ford had been a touch less ambitious with its pricing. And we don't really understand why the performance pack isn't standardised. These things apart though, there's little else to criticise here. This Focus ST is arguably the very definition of what a car of this kind should be. A guilt-free, fast hatch with near supercar performance and technology that's relatively affordable and perfectly practical. You get a class-leading ride and handling balance, estate versatility if you want it, and the option of low diesel running costs if that's needed. All in a car that deserves to be remembered fondly in a fine tradition of fast forwards.